Hi there, it's Simone. I'm so glad you are here today for a currently inked video that is probably going to be on the longer side. I am going to tag all the different sections with minutes in the description box below so you can jump around if you care to do so. The first thing I would like to mention is that on my last currently inked video, um, I received several comments where you told me that I actually weighed my pens incorrectly, and that's definitely right. Um, I totally forgot that I use some of my pens with caps, some of them without, that I cap them. Um, and so I actually need to redo that. And I also, somebody also mentioned that the, not only the weight is, um, an important factor in how a pen feels in your hand. Um, that is definitely true. It's also the girth of the section of your pen. This one, <clears throat> for instance, is wider than this one. And then also somebody said the material, uh, how the pen feels in my hand, if it feels slippery or if it feels um, <clears throat> very secure, makes a difference on how I grip my pen and how that affects the writing experience or the hand fatigue that I'm experiencing. So every time I wrote with a fountain pen in the last month, I paid a lot of attention to that and I wrote it down first in my um, testing notebook right here. I think this is when I filmed the last video um, and then I wrote out what I um, experienced. Uh, but then I, in between, I retired this journal and decided, how, well, how how about I'm using this one so I can um, just write down what pen I'm using on this side and then all of the experience that I have with this pen on the other side. And that's what I have been doing since. And it's amazing. I definitely want to do this uh, forever-ish. Um, and yeah, so <clears throat> I'll tell you a bit about the experience that I had with all of the inked pens. But the other things, two things that I did was I made a little um, flyer thingy of all the ink samples and ink bottles that I own. Um, I have this um, column right here that says I swatched it in my swatch book. I have, I had it inked in a pen and I documented it in my ink journal. Um, and I definitely have a lot of pens, uh, inks that I have not ever inked yet. And some I haven't even sampled yet. So I have sampled all of the ink vent inks because that's what I did every day in December. But there, there's lots of inks that I haven't used. So this is another shows that I don't need any more ink samples, even though Here's a video YouTuber recommendation, Manda B. I'll link her um, channel in the description box below. She makes, uh, she does 30 inks, 30 days. She's a subscriber of the Ink Flight Box from Ink Journal. I'll link all the information in the description box below. This is the last time I'm saying this. If you need a link, check it out in the description. And... Um, she made me drooling over the ink journal boxes for sure, the ink flight boxes for sure. Maybe that's something that I can do instead of a advent calendar in December. Not sure. I definitely need to make a dent on these before I'm going to go getting more ink samples in the house. And then I purchased this uh, business card holder on Amazon. Um, it had a really weird... Uh, chemical smell in the beginning but it's aired out now and this is where I started to, to store okay um, and so I just I, I decided to divide it into different colors but I'm not 100% sure I succeeded with that um, these are all the inks that I have sampled on these cards that are not, these are not all inks that are in this flyer 
but I just wanted to show you how, how that looks. It fits okay, and it's already full, so I probably would need a full, in air quotes. Yeah, some ideas that I can, um, you can totally take from me. Here's an overhead shot of the pens that I had inked. It's two, four, six, eight, nine pens that I had inked uh, in the last rotation. I'm gonna switch the shot and show you the ink, each pen close up and the ink level of each pen. So in the background, there's my cutie patootie kitten butts to be seen. Um, but I think if I'm going to have it towards the light source, then um, you can see better how much ink is still in the pens. So the first pen that I have is the Kaweco IL Sport Golden Espresso. I have replaced the nib with an M nib. The first I, I purchased it with, an, with a fine nib because that was the only one that was left and then I purchased an M nib uh, for it. I had inked it up since December with the Sailor and Tinteria's collaboration um, homemade tortillas and that is now empty. So it took me almost four months, five months, yeah, five months to uh, finish this pen. It never dried out. It worked always really well right from the start. So that's that's amazing, but I'm going to um, clean this one out for now. The second pen I had inked was the Twisby VAC 700R Iris. This is also an MNIB. I had purchased this in the end of December as well. Um, I had inked it up uh, in this rotation with spicy chipotle, also the A Sailor and Tintorias uh, collaboration. And you can see there is still a little bit left and I am going to leave this in the rotation. I expect this to be finished uh, fairly soon. The next pen that I have is the Kaweco Sport. This is a translucent, the natural coconut. I received this as a gift from Amy and the nib that you can see on here is a double broad nib. I had this inked up with um, Sailor Shikiyori Yozakura and it were, since it's a double broad nib, it didn't really take long to empty that one out. I didn't didn't consider that when I inked it because I did not even fill the tiny converter up all the way. And so this ran out basically after two writing sessions. The next pen that I had inked was the Wolves uh, Pilot Vanishing Point in the yellow colorway. This is not a gold nib. This is a special alloy and it is also written empty. I had inked it up with pi um, Private Reserve uh, Electric DC Blue. And let me take out the converter. As you can see, I did not fill it up. Did I fill it up all the way? It kind of looks like it almost. Um, so this one is empty as well. And I'm gonna take that one out of the rotation. This one is the Kaweco Collection Cyan that came out in last November. That's when I purchased it. I also purchased it with an MNIB and the color on the screen isn't the best. It is a lot, it has more greenish yellow hues than you can actually see on the screen. That's an MNIB. And the color that is in here is Diamine. Sub Zero, it's from the Inkwent 2021 and it's still halfway filled, so I'm gonna leave that one. Next pen 
in this rotation is the Twisby Swipe. Also an MNIB. Um, it is filled with a shimmering ink. As you can see, the Sub-Zero from the previous uh, fountain pen is also a shimmering ink. Um, and the shimmering ink that is in here is the Robert Oster um, collaboration with Endless Pens and Micah Fines, and the colorway is Stargazing. And this is how much is left in the uh, Twisby Swipe converter, this humongous converter. There's still a lot of ink in there, so this pen is going to be kept in the rotation. This is the Franklin Christoph model 45 in emerald green, I think. Vintage green? Vintage green, sorry for the misspeaking. The nib that is on here is an Opus 88 M nib. I removed that from the um, Opus 88 that I own and switched out the nibs that the nib that was on here. Um, the color that is in here is another Robert Oster uh, collaboration with Endless Pens and Micah Fines, and it is Tea Time. So you were wondering how much ink was in this, and that is almost full. So going to keep that one in the rotation as well. The next pen is the Opus 88 Coloro in the red colorway. The nib that is on here Really? Are you sure? Get out of the way. The nib that is on here is the Franklin Christoph SIG medium nib. SIG stands for stop italic gradient. Uh, every time I need to translate or tell you what SIG means, I have no idea anymore. It's stop italic gradient. Um, and I really had trouble writing with this on the Franklin Christoph. It writes really nicely on this Opus 88. It is really hard to detect how much ink is left in this pen, but I assume that it is. Okay, cat, not again. Can you move that it's, wow, this much right here? So there is still a little bit in there and I'll just keep it in the rotation inked and when it's done, it's gonna be done. And the last pen I had inked was the Custom Pilot Custom 74 in burgundy with a, an M nib. This is the only gold nib that I own. And it writes absolutely smoothly I love this pen and this nib and this pen is also empty so I'm going to clean that one as well okay next section is going to be about the writing experience how these pens felt I'm going to re-weigh all of the pens with cap without cap depending on how I'm using them um, so let's start with the golden espresso this pen is for my feeling on the heavier side, the aluminum is quite slippery. And I had a clip on it that I removed because I found that every time the clip was on it and it wasn't on, on the bottom right here, I would have a drag for the pen to move around. And that annoyed me. So I tried to feel, see how it worked without the clip and I enjoy the writing experience much more. Um, the section here is not very wide. I don't have a measuring, a, a, a precise measure, measuring tool to tell you how wide the section is. I probably can check for the specifications online, but um, it's probably the thinnest section of all the pens that I own and it's very short um, 
And I feel that, especially with this pen, I grip it very hard. And that's probably why um, my hand tires um, most easily with this pen. So this one I weighed correctly. The AL Sport was, wow, at that time it was 23. Now it's empty. Sport is 20 grams right now as of May 23, 2022. <clears throat> this I'm going to clean out and I'm not going to refill it for now. Then the Twisty Vac Iris is obviously I don't post it. I, I don't even know. Oh, you could post it, but it gets a uh, very back heavy. So I don't post this pen. Um, it's 23 grams. I really enjoy writing with this pen. Um, it writes smoothly every time I use it. I never have any trouble with hard starts or anything like that. Um, even though it's so big, maybe that's why I enjoy writing with it because, well, well, I was going to say the section is wider, but I'm actually not 100% sure. Yeah, so I, this is just visual proof, but this one is still narrower than this one for sure. But it's not as uh, girthy as I thought it was. Uh, but I do enjoy writing with this. It feels very well balanced in my hand when I hold it. Um, you can see the way I grip my pen is mostly like, like so, or sometimes mm, like this. But most recently, I'm, I'm really kind of like the picture book um, fountain pen user. So <clears throat> this is an amazing pen. I really enjoy it using it. There is still some ink left, so I am going to leave this inked knowing that it might run out in between the next um, filling session, but I do have a plan for that. So this goes, this stays. This was just recently gifted to me and um, I again write with it uncapped uh, because otherwise it's not long enough. Uh, I don't have a clip for this one um, and I really enjoyed writing with it and it is, wow. Is there a regular sport? Yeah, 12 grams. So this is still the same same weight, 12 grams. I. It's really interesting because in the beginning I thought I would like writing with this more but the more i write with the kaweco pens the more i enjoy the plastic versions of them so i loved the double broad nib it brought out the shading properties of the uh, sailor yosak yosak sailor shikiori yosakura ink so nicely um but next time i'm using this i'm going to fill the converter more because a double broad nib uses a lot of ink. So this is going to be cleaned. This pen, well, uh, I don't really have to weigh this again because it, you can't write with it uncapped. VP is 32 grams. Let's see if that is correct. 31. Um, I have trouble uh, having a nice handwriting uh, with this pen. So I really struggle to have a consistent, nice looking handwriting. And I think it's because of the way I'm supposed to grip this pen, um, which is weird because it, it doesn't look like it, it the clip interferes with my handwriting, but it seems to. So <clears throat> I am not sure I'm 100% in love with this pen. Uh, the Private Reserve Electric DC Blue was the only ink that bled through some of the papers that I used it on. Uh, it ghosted and I sometimes had hard starts, even though it's 
I heard that these pens do that from time to time. I haven't had a problem with it so far, but with this ink, I had to um, do the downstroke multiple times on several occasions. So this one is empty as well, so I'm going to clean that. Then I don't really have to say anything about the Kaweco again. This one has a clip. This one is not as problematic. Maybe, yeah, it doesn't, but see, so the, it wants to roll on its side. <clears throat> Let me see if that happens when the clip is not on. Obviously and clearly, it is not happening. So maybe the reason why this doesn't bother me with the plastic pen, it, it's because I don't have to have as much strength to keep it from turning around. Not 100% sure, but um, having this... So if I put the clip right on the opposite side so that it would be on the bottom all the time, it's not really that bad, but it you have to pay attention on where, how you cap your pen or post your pen um, so that the clip is pointing downwards. This pen, I inked these pens on a Monday, just like I'm doing this right now, and I... Um, used it the next time on a Friday and it was dried out on that Friday so I had to prime it um, <clears throat> with water and to get it to work but that was the only time I had to do that. Um, there is a shimmering ink in this pen so I was expecting or I was um, considering if there was some trouble in it, there is some shimmer to be seen in this right here. Um, the shading on this ink, or I don't know if it's the shimmer or whatever it is, um, it is phenomenal. Even if you don't see any shimmer, it's still the shading. I, I am super in love with this uh, ink. It's definitely on my favorite list for sure. So I'm glad that this is not empty yet. I'm going to use it more. Um, this one, I don't use Post-it most of the time. So let's put the Twisby swipe on here. And that brings the swipe from 19 grams with a... Wow. Yeah, 18, 19 to 13 grams. So there, there is a difference. It doesn't, it still doesn't feel too heavy when it's posted. Let me check how the, but see, the nib, the, ah, I hate that. I didn't even know I was so picky, but I am. <clears throat> it's nicely balanced with posting the cap. It's also still balanced and nice without, but I actually, if I'm like comparing this, I actually like this more. So I probably would use it cap, uh, post-it, capped post-it, sorry. I'm mixing up the words. It's 19 grams. <clears throat> the writing experience is nice if and when the ink flows. Uh, every time I used this pen, I had to support it uh, to write. You can't really see it right now, but there is a lot of shimmer right here. And um, the first time I used it, it was pretty clogged down here. Let me... That was absolutely and totally annoying. Um, so I had to actually remove the feed and the nib clean in between the feet and the nib and that happened multiple times over the time that I used this pen. So it was clogged when I used it on April 27. It was clogged when I used it May 2nd. Um, it, on May 2nd I just had to hold it under running water and then it worked. And then I just used it on... Um, May 21st, and I again had to prime. This time I just turned the knob on the converter 
and uh, primed the feet that way and then it wrote. But this ink or this pen and ink combination do not work really well together. I'm not sure if it's the ink or the pen or if it's both, but it's super needy, needs a lot of maintenance. I'm just gonna leave it like that and see how it continues, um, but I'm not sure that this is either the ink is way too shimmery or there's too many shimmer particles and it's just not working together or this pen and ink combination isn't the best. Um, we'll see. I'm leaving it like that for now. This pen I have to use pa capped. Uh, capped. See, again, I'm making the same mistake. Post it. So... This one says 13 grams. When I weighed it last time, it was 14 grams. But it's so it's very similar to the weight that it was before. Um, <clears throat> my observations with this uh, pen and ink is that I love the ink. Let me show you another, uh, another amazing shading ink. Um, same as the Sub Zero. The ink that it is in here is Robert Oster Tea Time. And yeah, so de definitely one of the favorite, favor, amazing ones right here. The nib is the Opus 88 M nib. And I don't know if it's just be when I write with this pen, but it feels super hard, very, a lot of feedback. It kind of feels like I'm using a pencil, a very hard pencil on paper. Um, and I'm not 100% sure that I like this. I, When this pen and this pen is empty, I want to switch around the nibs again and see if the this M nib that belongs into this pen feels as hard and as pencil-y in this pen as it does in this pen. <clears throat> but that's the experience with this pen. I'm going to leave this anyway because it's still full and I do enjoy the color. The Opus 88, I don't know what I weighed, what it weighed, came in weigh, weight wise last time it was 25 grams. So I guess I, I, I weighed it with the cap. I don't post this pen. So we need to remove the cap and then it comes in at 14 grams. 14 grams. Um, so this always flows right from the start. I'm getting used to the nib, but it's definitely not the most beautiful penmanship that I have with this pen. Um, and this is what I wrote here. Um, it feels good in my hand, even after a longer writing session. So that says something about this nib here. Ugh, didn't like it here. But I do actually like how I wrote with this right here. So I guess this is just an acquired nib and I just need more practice. Um, and I guess I'm getting that writing with this pen and nib. The last one is the Custom 74. I sometimes use it posted, but I sometimes don't post it. So it is... Custom 74 is 14 grams without posting and 22 posted, unpo yeah, posted. So unposted, posted. Um, <clears throat> huh, interesting. Well, no, wrong. Because of this big ball, this is like, did you see how this moves around? So I... I do think I prefer it uncapped. I do like uncapping, not using my my pens uh, posted uncapped. I all use all of my pens uncapped. You know what I mean. Um, so, yes, I love writing with this nib. Every ink that I have in this pen glides, comes out, shades nicely. It's just a joy writing with it. 
um, what did I write? Writes immediately, all the time, no hard starts, ink seems wet, but all inks in this pens have had good flow, so maybe it's a wet pen. I use it posted and unposted, both are comfortable. Section is a bit thin, and I noticed that <clears throat> um, several times when I wrote with it, after about a page and a half, I feel tired with this pen, but it's still so fascinating to use it. So I am I'm looking forward to the San Francisco Pen Show because I really want to try writing with several pens that I have on my list. I put a complete buying stop on fountain pens um, after I started observing how these pens feel and write in my hand because I just noticed that I cannot make any decision on buying uh, unless I have tested those pens. So I am making a list of pens I want to test and then maybe get one at the pen show and then save up for the other ones. Um, <clears throat> but I'm really curious to see how the Custom 823 um, would feel in my hand if I'm loving this one already. And I think that the section is a bit uh, narrow. So I would assume that the A23 would be a perfect next pen. I don't know. So <clears throat> let's talk about the plans that I have for my color palette. Um, I also did not weigh any of these fountain pens. So maybe we should, there's no nib on this one. Ooh. Okay, I'll put a nib on the Lamy Safari just to see. Let's make it zero. Nine, ten grams. Wow. <clears throat> why, is, why is my pen gone right here? And then the Twisby Eco is not used, posted by me usually. And that is... 13. 13 grams. And um, it's interesting. The pens. So this one is 20 grams. This one is 23 grams. The VEC Arias and the AL Sport. But the Sport, the Swipe, the Franklin Christoph, the Opus 88, the Custom 74, To Speed Eco, Lamy Safari are all in the well, the Lamy Safari is actually the lightest one of those, but they're all in the 12 to 15 gram range, 12 to 14 gram range. So that seems to be a, that seems to be interesting because the twist, the Custom 74 is, feels more substantial than these pens. So yeah, do with this information, whatever you want. Maybe you want to do your own testing just because it's fun. It is. I can promise you that. And yeah, let me know what you experience um, in all of those. Which pen feels best for you quests? Well, that's my quest, but maybe you have a similar one as I do. Okay, I'm going to take this apart again. And yes, this is nothing you have to do. I just like to clean these pens and then keep them that way so there is airflow in there if there's still wetness my color palette next topic so um <clears throat> the yellow is gone the pink is gone the blue is gone and the um, gray, light gray. So what I have left is a lot of green and blue tones. The brown spicy chipotle, which um, I'm sure I'm going to write empty in between the next filming session. Um, I my parents are coming to see me in June and they are going to bring a Twisby mini and I think what I'll be doing then is I'll fill 
I'll try to get this empty before they get here so that I can swap the mini with the VAC iris and then put another color in there. And I already have one in mind. Um, so I have, I'm, I'm good on the greens and turquoises. So what I do think what I need is I, I feel like even though I really love these colors, I want to go more bold. So I thought I was going to add an orange, um, a pink, and I noticed that I don't have a blue. Um, and maybe for and a red. So then I would have um, orange, pink, red, blue, turquoise, this green tealy shimmer thing, a green, a light green, and this dark gray leaning black. So uh, since this brown is very red leaning, I thought that I'd hold off with the red until the brown is done. Um, and the color that I have in mind for that is This is not the right word. Old book smell. So, well, in my opinion, this is a red. It might be a brown, but to me, this is red. So I would replace the spicy chipotle with the warm book. Yeah, in, on this, on these cards, you can actually see the difference. So I would replace this brown with this red and fill the Twisby Mini with that think that's a good idea so I'll take that one out then for the orange because I have my, my idea these are all new so I do have an orange hue in this um, it's not the boldest I had originally originally thought maybe a, maybe this one this is super bold compared to this. So I guess I'm not going to lean out um, of my color, of my, I'm not gonna go outside of my comfort zone too much, but um, this one is definitely on the list, maybe for July. I like how these look together. So yes, um, this one was a contender. So I have orange, for the pink, I don't think I have that swatched out right here. So that's something that I need to do still. Um, the pink, I thought maybe the Monte Verde Kindness Pink. And then do I have all of those colors? Yeah, so this is my color. This was my color palette last time. Sakura Sub Zero The Oyster, the Tea Time, the Stargazing, and this. And so I'm going to get rid of this, 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 and this. And I'm keeping those. So I'm the idea is to add these two and then not this one but i'm i have a funsies pen so maybe i'm gonna put this in the funsies pen who knows um and the pink is that all that i wanted oh a blue what was the blue color that i thought of oh yes did i swatch that out yet I saw this one and I'm not sure this has, mm, could have a shimmer, but I'm 
definitely not 100% sure that that is true. So I would put this one in here. And then I need to swatch the <clears throat> kindness pink. I think that could be a nice color selection. So I would, the Campfire Crackle does have shimmer. But um, if you compare it with this one, it's definitely less shimmery. So maybe this is not as prone to clogging up a pen as this one. Um, it's probably comparable to the shimmer in this one, and that is not too bad. Um, my idea was to actually use a Lamy pen again. Oh, there is a nib on this. Because um, I've been kind of not liking them anymore, and I just want to see if that is still true or if I just thought I needed more other things so I, I think I want to test my my love or not love. I want to put the campfire crackle in the custom 74. Um, this is one of those pens that I com can completely take apart so I'm not afraid to put an ink in here that might um, clog the pen. I can take it apart completely and clean it fully. Um, this feed has been stained by the Vinta Cicatuna Sanduco. It's still quite red, but um, I'm, I just cleaned this right now, so I'm going to leave it um, to air out and dry some more. There's still a lot of wetness in this uh, converter. So that's the Custom 74. Then the Twisby Mini is going to be this one because so I don't have that one for now. And then the Vintatala, I thought to put this in a Kaweco. Um, maybe just the iridescent pearl, just because I can. Um, I think that is a nice um, ensemble of pens. So I'm not going to ink up the V. Uh, vanishing point I'm not going to ink up the AL uh, sport and I'm not going to ink up the double broad just because my goal with each of the inks or the the collections palettes that I create is to use at least one of the uh, ink vent so I'm getting to get to use all of those inks so I still have the sub sub zero so that is done with and then I want to use a an ink that I haven't inked in any of my pens yet and that would actually be true for all of the inks that I'm adding right now and this one I haven't even swatched yet so oh I did ha I swatched that one before but so that is a good good thing I really like that I quickly wanted to talk about the funsies pen this is it um, I found this in my son's drawer the other day. He is 15 and a half now, and this was his beginner fountain pen in uh, second grade. Um, he's in ninth grade now, and it has been inked up since then. Um, so I thought maybe it would be fun to figure out how am I supposed to hold this? This is a beginner fountain pen, the Pelicano Junior. So this is a Pelican pen. I think this is where the the ring finger lies. This is this, yeah. So I guess I would have to put this in. Maybe it has grooves that guide you. Yeah, I have to push it in all the way like this. And I haven't tested this nib yet. It's an M, no, it's actually an A beginner's nib and I just wanted to figure out how it it actually has the placement for you can't hold this any other way than this it's interesting I did not decide to film uh, the inking of the pens but this is a regular a standard international cartridge that I filled with the Vintatala and you can see that when I put it on here, it barely sticks. It's like, <clears throat> does it even have contact? 
I was wondering, is it the 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 cartridge or is it the the feed, the thing that connects with the cartridge? And this is the Kaweco converter that usually I always have a very very hard time connecting to the to this knob. And when I put that in here, it's secure. <clears throat> So I'm probably going to suck the ink out of this again. And what happens? There is another empty cartridge right here. I use this one. It's also really wobbly and flimsy. And that, I don't like that. So I'm just going to use the converter and be on the safe side. But I wanted to hop on and tell you. Also, I have decided to ink up this Pelicano Jr. with the Wonderland from Diamine, from the Diamine Inkvent. I like how the color of this ink um, is kind of represented in the section here and I'm curious to see how it writes. I just realized that this video is already very long and I really want to sh share everything that I shared with you in the video. So what I'm going to do is make the writing samples into a different um, video. I just wanted to show you how different the uh, color palette looks only if you only change out three inks. Um, this looks totally different from this one. Um, what I noticed for both of the inks that I added though is that they look really dirty. Um, the kindness pink looks kind of like it has a black um, undertone right back here as well as the Robert Oster Campfire Crackle. So <clears throat> I am curious to see what the uh, writing samples look like on the different papers. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, do you prefer everything all in one, one video or do you rather like to hear all of my thoughts on all of the pens and everything like that, like I did just now? Leave a comment down below and I will see you in my next video with the currently inked swatching.